What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another athletes video. Today, it's your boy Guido on the mic, and today I am going to review the Los Angeles Clippers offseason. Now, this has been a pretty crazy offseason for the Clippers and just for the entire NBA as a whole. And let's just get right into this. Let's start off, shall we? Let's start off with the season that just passed, the 2023-2024 NBA season. The Clippers were fourth in the West with a record of 51-31, and and they were a first-round exit to the Mavericks. Now, if you're asking me, I think if this team was fully healthy, I think they would have made it much farther. Um, but that's the main problem with the Clippers. Either It's either Kawhi or Paul George is always injured, mainly Kawhi. And when you have that type of like injury-prone problem, like, kind of like the Pelicans, it's just not going to work out. I think that's kind of why um, we're going to talk about someone who left. Someone who left the team. Actually, two people who left the team later on, but we'll talk about why they left. Um, but yeah, the Mavericks took advantage of that. They just um, won in six games against the Clippers. Um, took, took care of business, and their Clippers were out of it just then. But to be fair, the Clippers looked really good. Remember, they had Paul George and James Harden and Kawhi and Westbrook all healthy. They looked like a great team, but they just couldn't stay healthy, man. What, what can I really say? They, you just couldn't stay healthy. And the, once again, the, another first-round exit for the Clippers in the Kawhi PG era that has concluded. But now let's get into the offseason. Let's see what the move the Clippers did to... to um to counteract um, all the things that happened. First, let's talk about the draft, <laughs> the draft compensation. Um, the Clippers just drafted Max Christie's brother, Cam Christie. And they look pretty similar. Yeah, y'all see that, bro? Like, premium premium light skins, bro, with curly hair. Curly hair. Uh, but yeah, he was with the 46th overall pick. Um, he's going to be more of a project, if anything. I don't think anything too crazy. Uh, but yeah, Max and Cam Christie are both in the league now, I guess you could say. Nothing much to talk about for the draft for the Clippers. Let's move on. Let's talk about the free agency for the Clippers. They had a lot of free agents, as you see here. Paul George is the main free agent. James Harden, Westbrook, P.J. Sucker on the player option, Mason Plumlee, Daniel Tice, Brandon Boston Jr., Musa Diabate, and Xavier Moon. Just a huge list of free agents, kind of similar to the 76ers. In terms of length, pause, and um, it's just crazy. A lot of people moved this offseason. A lot of people signed to different places. A lot of people re-signed. But we'll talk about what happened. First, let's talk about the departures. You have four key departures that you're going to miss out on. The first one is Paul George. He has left the Clippers after he was really unsatisfied with the front office and the contract talks. Contract talks, yeah. And Paul George was not happy with that. And Philly was hitting him up. He was like, oh, Philly was like, yo, yo, Shadi, come, come to, come to Philly. <laughs> and then Paul George was like, yo, what up? Give me that money. And then they threw two hundred twelve million dollars at him, and he came to Philly. But to be fair, I think the main problem was the injury problems that Kawhi had. I think that was the biggest reason why Paul George left. Um, he just didn't see long term success there, and it, his, his time is running out in the league. He's thirty four years old, and. Him leaving makes sense, honestly. Just to team up with Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, it's it's a really good shot to win a title now at the East. In the East, they have a really well well built team in the East. It's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. Next up, we have Mason Plumley who left. I'm pretty sure he went to the Phoenix Suns, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, solid backup center. They lost for pretty much nothing. Russell Westbrook has left the Clippers as well. I thought Westbrook was going to stay, if I'm be honest. Westbrook was a good fan of the Clippers. I feel like a six-man role was amazing for him. But he has signed with the Denver Nuggets. Honestly, that's also not... That's a pretty good fit for Westbrook, too, in my opinion. He's going to facil- He's gonna work this, the, the bench really well. He's going to facilitate. He's going to operate at the offense, be the floor general. He's going to be amazing, I think. Westbrook's going to fit really well. more Better than most people think, I think. And I think Westbrook as a whole is just really underrated. Nowadays, at least in the league. And people don't see how valuable he really is to the team. And the last departure was Daniel Tice. Nothing much to talk about there. He's Daniel Tice. No. I guess, Hanada, Hanada, if you're watching this, yes, I know. He's a Celtic legend. Daniel Tice is a Celtic legend. And, yeah, that's all I can really say. Next up, let's talk about the arrivals that the Clippers got. To counter the leaving um, situation of Paul George and Westbrook, they have signed Mo Bamba, 
Nicholas Batum, Derek Jones Jr., Chris Dunn, and Kevin Porter Jr. If I'm being completely honest, they're all pretty decent signings, but when you compare the arrivals to the departures, it's not good. You're losing an all-star player for a solid backup bench player, role player, and Derek Jones. Don't get me wrong, Derek Jones is a solid defender, and he can block down people on defense, but... He doesn't play much offensively, and that's a problem. That's, you're losing the uh, offensive like superstar in Paul George for Derrick Jones. It's not going to cut it. The Clippers definitely got worse this offseason. It's not even close. Obama's a pretty solid signing. So was Batum. They're good pieces off the bench, but that's nothing special. Kevin Porter Jr., he's interesting to talk about because he actually might be uh, like a breakout star, surprisingly, to say that. Yeah, he was really good on the Rockets, but, you know, the whole, the whole thing with that happened and um that was not fun i do not condone that and that was just oh god bro was booed at the league for that for a good bit <laughs> and the clippers said huh well we, we don't care about the, the, the anything with the allegations no, we want the talent that's basically what the clippers said and they think how poor junior chris Dunn's a solid defensive guard with the bench and that's pretty much about it for the rivals nothing too special for the clippers just solid backup role players nothing much more but without further ado, the roster now looks like this. At your one, you got James Harden, so really good solid, solid, solid starting point guard. At your two, you got Terrence Mann potentially. Three, you got Derek Jones Jr. At your four, you have Kawhi Leonard. Five, you have Ivisa Zubac. Zubac. Um, your six man, Norman Powell. Then Chris Dunn, Amir Coffey, Nicholas Batum, Mo Bamba, KPJ, PJ Tucker, and Bones Highland. If I'm being honest, this team would be pretty good if they were in the East. <laughs> but they are in the Western Conference, unfortunately for them. And I don't see them making it that far with this roster. It's solid, but it's not going to cut it, man. You guys could be like a solid like, 11, 10th, 9th seed maybe with this team in the West. In the East, maybe we could get away game like a 6th seed, 7th seed in the East. But not, not here. In the West, no. Um, but not, overall, the talent's still pretty good, but losing out on Paul George is too big of a loss to not recover. And, um, I think getting DeMar would have maybe solved that a little bit, but they didn't get DeMar either, so. That's a pretty big hole they have, they have not yet filled, um, pause. But, let's move on to the future now. Will there be any more moves? I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so, Clippers Nation, if you guys are watching this, um. I really hope you guys make a trade for somebody. Uh, you guys need more top end talent. I feel like Harden and Kawhi are eh. Like Kawhi can definitely carry the team, but it's just he's too injury prone now. It's like before when Kawhi was in his prime, that man could carry a team to a championship. Like we saw in twenty nineteen with the Raptors, and I don't think that's the Kawhi we know now anymore. Obviously, he's still really talented. He's a superstar. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know if he has that same longevity of in a season that he has before. It's kind of sad to see, but yeah. Will they improve? Hell no. If you tell me they imp they're improving, <laughs> you're cuckoo like coconuts, all right? You better not say that, all right? Don't, don't you dare. Mm. But moving on, my prediction next season for them, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have them drop to around the 7th to ninth seed. I think the Clippers could still make the play-in. Um... But I just don't see them being a lock in the playoffs. They're going to be contending for the playoff spot in the end of the conference. I just can't. It's really tough for me to see them improve um, with this current roster they have. Yes, um, I don't know how um, <laughs> the Clippers are going to do with the new arena now, too. The, in Inglewood, that's going to be kind of scary. Um, but we'll hopefully we'll see. We'll see how they turn out. And what grade do I give the Clippers this offseason? I'm going to give them a C. Um, the only reason why I gave you guys a C, not a D, pause, um, was because losing Paul George was huge, right? Like, that instantly drops your grade a lot. However, I feel like I'm being a little too harsh on the additions because they are solid additions, don't get me wrong, but they're just not going to win you a championship. Derek Jones is a solid defensive player. Mo Bamba is a solid backup center. And th those two players are really helpful, obviously. But Toom is a good sniper off the bench. You can't sleep on him. And KPJ could break out. That could be 
Um, that's a solid signing. KPJ, as much as I don't respect what he did out of the court, um, KPJ is still a really good NBA talent. Um, he could really pop off in LA here if he's given the right opportunity. But only time will tell from now on, I guess. I don't know what's going to happen with the Clippers, man. I don't know what they're doing. They have no picks. They can't rebuild. Forced to contend. What can I say? But, um, yeah, let me know where you guys think the Clippers are going to end up this offseason. Um, do you think there's going to be any more trades, any more big moves, any more signings? And where do you think the Clippers end up next season? Do you guys think they make the playoffs, play in, or lottery somehow? Uh, I don't see lottery, but I do see, like, play in maybe. But without much more to say, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. Like and subscribe and comment down below your thoughts on this offseason review. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Adios and goodbye.